Our Law and Justice segment tonight, the Trump administration is considering pulling the U.S. out of the United Nations Human Rights Council. And according to a new expose, the council responsible for creating international human rights laws doesn't practice human rights themselves. According to the author of the expose, this has created a major threat to the environment, to climate change, to human right to life, and the well-being of the world. With me now, the author herself of Anti-Human Rights and Anti-Environmental Practices of the UN Misused American Taxes, Pallavi Kakodi McHugh. Pallavi, thanks for being here. Hi, Liz. Thank you for inviting me again. <laughs> All right, Pallavi, we, we spoke last week about your book. You talked about why you think the United States should leave the United Nations, about ta misuse of American taxpayer money yes. at the United Nations that you say actually goes to fund racial segregation. But, Pallavi, I invited you back because I want to delve into a little bit more of the corruption that you say is happening within the U.N. You worked there. You saw this firsthand. And I want to give some examples and have you expound on them because you say that there's some lawlessness that goes on among United Nations staff, even as it pertains to sexual abuse of starving children and women around the world. Yes. Pallavi, can you tell us about that? Um, sexual abuse wise, there's been uh, sex sexual abuse of not just UN peacekeepers, which who belong to militaries of other countries, but who are civilian UN peacekeepers. And this has been going on for around 27 years. There's a study, UN study, I've read 1996, then I've read uh, the latest ones, 2015, and more closer to the time. And one thing which is very important, there was an independent expert report uh, dealing with the sexual abuse of peacekeepers of four different countries. And that was submitted to the UN. And the UN's job, the department, was to prepare the Secretary General's report going to the ambassadors of the world. And then the prime ministers and the presidents will hear about it. But that report was crushed and it never reached the ambassadors of the world and a profoundly different report was submitted. I have the copies of both and I've read them, I've compared them. This report, one of the UN staff was afraid will get squashed because it was highly critical of the uh, UN New York staff, uh, because, uh, lots of things, but they didn't want them to look bad and the problem is, has been going on for years. So what they did, it was they provided a report, all right, and but that report says make, it makes UN appear as if they are making great progress. It does not say the fact that a lot of these victims find it absolutely pointless to pursue this report, uh, pursue their cases because most of the time they don't get justice, and it takes such a long time. And these so are the things. Let, let me interject here. Would it, would you say it would be fair to say that the United Nations covered up this sexual abuse? Yes. And that the victims yes. the victims never saw justice and it was never investigated fully because the United Nations was worried about their own name being sullied? No, it's a report, not just a particular case. It's a report which says that uh, they take a long time. They, uh, the report says that they are more interested in the rights of their own UN staff than the victims. And the victims, ha uh, like, they don't find it pointless because the same staff are still working there. And there's a lot of things, like there's manipulation of statistical data, which even I can see that uh, they lump it into two groups. One is oh, uh, alleged and it, it's been proved. The other, they just say it's the cases are dismissed. Sometimes the cases are dismissed not because there uh, they were incorrect claims, that it was simply because there wasn't enough evidence to prove it. But they are using that statistical uh, data to say, oh, there are a lot of people complaining about us, but we are not the baddies, kind of a thing. Right, and, and let, me just, let me just clarify this to make sure that they have the facts here perfectly clear. Tell me who the perpetrators of these sexual abuse allegations were and who the victims were. The the victims were the ones uh, in these conflict areas, civilians, and uh, sometimes refugees, and uh, the pe uh, the perpetrators were UN staff, and uh, the a lot of the staff are from other countries, and that uh, it's hard to. Uh, hold them accountable because they belong to militaries and police of other countries. But you, I, I don't accept that. That's not a good enough reason. For no, it, it, it's not. It shouldn't be a good enough reason for anybody or any nation who's part of the United Nations. I mean, by being part of that group, we are in a sense accountable, or we are responsible for holding. P UN peacekeepers accountable to their behavior, especially when just absolutely horrendous crimes are perpetrated on innocent people. Like you said, refugees are starving women and children in other nations. Pallavi, there's also corruption or lawlessness that you said 
uh, happens when it comes to protecting civilians. Can you tell me about that? Uh, the thing is, the Haiti issue, that they went, United Nations are responsible for around 10,000 deaths in Haiti because their leaking pipes you know, infected the waters of Haiti and they had cholera. Before that, they didn't, for, I think, for the last 100 years. And they knew about it and they kept on saying no, 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 even when there were scientific reports linking it. And then it was last year, they finally accepted. And then they say, oh, we've got diplomatic immunity. This whole diplomatic immunity, I consider it a license to kill, destroy, abuse but zero accountability. Like I heard your previous segment about can we sue them? You can't because they have diplomatic immunity. And like I wrote this book because I know, I know my choices were there was, I think there's only one or two people till, uh, till date who has taken the UN to court. This woman was sacked. She was a UN investigator. She was sacked. Her name is Caroline Hunt Matthews. And she was sacked because she reported a rape. And they sacked her, and then after 10 years of a legal battle, she finally won, and the verdict was that they sacked her. They weren't right to sack her. Right. And for me, I knew what was, I was up ahead. I'm standing up against the most powerful organization in the world. I had to do it in true a book so that they can crush the story, and I want Americans, the world, to wake up and be empowered to fight for your justice because you're not just today it's Haiti tomorrow it could be Americans and that like you have peacekeepers in the US and there is racism towards Americans which I have seen and because they I don't know whether they have that it's like I was I felt at times like I was almost an undercover cop because right. I'm Indian they nobody knew that I'm an unapologetic apologetically and proudly pro-United States. And no one knew that I love United States. Lots of Americans' um, letters are in my book. I was told right, it's not to be kind. Not I was to told be... off. Kind to, uh, like, I was kind to someone, an American in pain. I've, it's like giving a, a cough lodgings to someone who was coughing. And I've done that act. In so many countries in the world, no New Zealander told me, Pallavi, don't do it. No Australian told me, no, don't do it. And here I was being told by a senior UN officer who should know the law more than anybody else in the world because they were very high up in the rank. I was told off, like, oh, you shouldn't be, you know, you should be careful, this, that. And I didn't, it was, and the, the thing is, it's my it's my nature to be kind to people who are suffering. I don't care about their race. Right, and I, I, I mean, I think that's, that's part of the purpose, or it was the purpose of the United Nations, at least at some point, is to gather together as the world and not worry about race, but to help each other out. Pallavi, these, these allegations that you make, they're absolutely mind-boggling. I, I, I commend your bravery for exposing this, because like you said, it puts you in a position where there's a lot of power against you. A lot of people don't want you to be saying what you're saying. Yes. I appreciate you having the courage to come on this show to write your book and then come on the show and talk about it because, like you said, 10,000 deaths in Haiti. There were women and children in other countries who were sexually abused, mistreated, raped, and it was all covered up by the UN. And I appreciate you coming on the show and talking about it.